Good afternoon and welcome to our local government education webinar provided by University of Illinois Extension. My name is Nancy Wadrago, Extension Specialist in Community and Economic Development. As I said, we're going to mute microphones during the presentation and please be sure that your microphone is muted um, as well as uh, disabling videos for uh, just the best use of bandwidth here for everybody. Um, you can use the chat space to send questions to the speaker, and if you have any problems connecting, add those questions as well. Sound uh, or visual technical difficulties can be added to the chat space, and we'll monitor that and try to assist you. Today's webinar is Developing a Creative Economy. The presenter is Pam Schalhorn. Pam is a community and economic development educator for the U of I Extension in Bond, Clinton, Jefferson, Marion, and Washington counties. She holds a bachelor's degree in finance and economics and a master's degree in political studies. Pam's responsibilities include assessing, developing, and teaching community and economic development programs while working closely with stakeholders, community leaders, economic development professionals, and the general public. Her teaching and research interests include creative entrepreneurship, downtown and neighborhood development, poverty alleviation, community planning, and cultural awareness. In 2009, as an Illinois Small Business Development Center director, she began working with creative entrepreneurs in Rockford, Illinois. She designed a business course specifically for the creative entrepreneur called Creating the Creative Business, which she taught in both Rockford and Chicago. In Rockford, she assisted dozens of creative enterprises to start up or expand and played an integral role in developing the Rockford City Market, which hosts 60,000 visitors each summer. In 2015, Pam's research evolved into an Illinois Extension program called Developing the Creative Economy that focuses on ways communities, including those in rural areas, can tap into local creative talent to expand their economic development strategies. She recently finished designing a companion four-part community planning model specifically for communities interested in developing their own creative economy. Thank you so much, Pam, for being here today, and um, I'll turn it over to you now. Thank you. I also see here that Star of Rock Country Alliance is online and they have, it looks like six people uh, watching the presentation together. Welcome Star of Rock County Alliance, Country Alliance. And I just want to do a little shout out to my best friend, Susan Burton, who is part of that group. And I see she is also online. So um, she has actually been one of the artists that have inspired me throughout this. Um, she has been selling her art. Uh, she is a fantastic artist, owns Art Explorations, um, and uh, she was part of the inspiration for me developing my programs when I was in Rockford um, almost 10 years ago, so I'm really glad that she's online. Okay, so today I welcome everyone. Um, uh, I see, I've looked at the list, and I see we've got people all across the state of Illinois and um, throughout the area. I know some people were not able to make it today, so the recording will be made available. Uh, Nancy will be sending you an email as soon as, well, shortly after the presentation with that link, and you're more than willing to share or use this presentation any way you wish. Um, what is a creative economy? Uh, a creative economy is an economic system where value is based on novel, imaginative qualities rather than the traditional resources of land, labor, and capital. I always like to mention here that when I'm talking about a creative economy, I'm not saying to take all of your economic development programs and put them on a shelf. This is a complement. This is a this is an economic system or ecosystem, entrepreneurial ecosystem that interacts with other things that is going on in community and economic development within your um, communities and within your region. The most valuable asset in a creative economy is people. So it's slightly different than the way we've looked at economic development before. And some observers believe that creativity is the defining characteristic of a developed 21st century economy. Why develop a creative economy? I get this uh, question quite a bit. The creative economy is about creating a lifestyle that will attract people into your community while creating businesses that serve your community. 
Um, this is critical right now. And for any of you uh, that are familiar with uh, declining populations, you'll find that um, one of the things that will attract millennials into your community is having this creative ecosystem or opportunities to start these small businesses in your community. In fact, um, I was mentioning before about my friend Susan in Ottawa, Illinois, and although I do not have a case study on Ottawa right now, I would like to mention that Ottawa, Illinois, who has been really they have been developing a creative economy there for at least 10 to 15 years, maybe more. Uh, they are one of the only communi rural communities in Illinois that actually increased the number of people between the ages of 20 and 34 between 2000 census and the 2010 census. So when you see three other case studies in this program, Ottawa is another city that if you haven't been there, you might wanna go over there and see what's going on if you are interested in developing your own creative economy. Um, creating a why uh, develop a creative economy? What this talks about is building from within. And believe it or not, Isinger was talking about this in 1998. Build from within instead of depending on attracting from the outside community. Uh, you want a, a creative economy provides entre entre entrepreneurial opportunities for first generation business owners, especially women and minorities. It also helps that now that we see that conventional strategies that focus on luring manufacturing and other low wage industries don't seem to be working or providing long term economic opportunity. I want to talk a minute about the difference between creativity and innovation. I talk to a lot of city councils, city managers, and, and once in a while I have them tell me, well, I like the word innovation rather than creativity. Why don't we innovate instead of create? So I went out and I did some research and this Harmeyer um, published an article in 2015. He talks about creativity and innovation. Uh, here, um, creativity is defined as the mental ability to conceptualize, imagine new, unusual, or unique ideas, or to recognize new connections between seemingly random or unrelated things. Creativity is coming up with those new ideas, that imagination, using your imagination. Innovation, which is similar but different to creativity, is it's the process that transforms those unique creative ideas into new realities, new products, services, or processes that deliver greater value and benefit. Um, when I think about creativity and innovation, I think a lot about Steve Jobs. Uh, he came up with incredibly creative ideas, but then there needed to be some innovation around that to take those creative ideas and transform them into those new products, which Apple helped him do. According to Harmeyer, it is impossible to develop a truly innovative organization if creativity isn't recognized and nurtured. And likewise, failure to put effective processes in place that can transform creative thinking into practical, high value application, creativity is of virtually no use in a business. Well, in a community, it's the same thing. We want innovation, we want new products, we want new businesses, but we also have to be able to nurture and recognize those creative individuals, those creative ideas. And we need to, as it mentioned, nurture them, not just, um, I think sometimes with creativity, we, I don't know why, but we think that art just isn't important or music isn't important, but in reality, it is. It is part of your community development. It is part of your uh, economic development. So here I'm showing creativity and innovation. What we're looking for is that darker spot in the middle where creativity and innovation come together um, to where we can um, Create more, create more businesses, create a um, entrepreneurial ecosystem, if you will. Now, 
the interesting part is creative thinking potential exists in all of us. This is not just about artists and musicians, although artists and musicians get it. They get it quicker than the rest of us, how important creativity is. And in most cases, they do turn those creative ideas. They take a medium and they turn it into a, a product or a design or a piece of art. Um, but we all have that potential to be creative and come up with new creative ideas. So my first challenge to all of you on this call is, let's start by giving ourselves permission to be creative. Let's go back to when we were in kindergarten when we're using the color crayons. In fact, I often talk to my creative students and say that that's when our school system starts to, um, starts to stymie our creativity, is when they tell us to draw within the line. I mean, I can remember in kindergarten this young girl being um, admonished because she had drawn a really beautiful purple bunny next to a drawing that she was supposed to have colored in. And, and I really don't believe she should have been uh, admonished for it. I think she should have been um, you know, encouraged to pursue that kind of creative thinking. And I think, I know that most of my creative students and, and creative business owners uh, have faced this during their lives. Urban versus rural. Not sure from you're from mostly rural communities or urban communities. And I'm really sorry, I love this class when I can do this interactively, but with 78 participants, um, well actually more than that, we I noticed we have groups that are actually putting this in the chat box and I appreciate that. But here is a quote that I love. Create a culture of entrepreneurship. That's what the creative economy is about an ecosystem in which startup and job growth can thrive. America is loaded with talent. It has always been our greatest strength. And that talent is spread across the country, in rural areas as well as urban. So this is not just about urban and a culture of entrepreneurship in urban areas. It's also about rural communities. And I'll be talking about a couple smaller communities that have done some great things. So the first thing is, this is an exercise, and if you'd like, um, Nancy, will you be copying this um, chat box for me? I will. Thank you. Just uh, make sure you get copies of all these groups, but I am going to ask that feel free to open your chat boxes, and because um, we've got a lot of people in the room, I want each of you to just think of one um, a creative talent or creative asset, a creative individual with talent or creative asset that you already have in your community. Um, normally, if I was in, in front of a group, which I do tour around the state and give this program in different communities, but I would write this down on a list. But at this point, you wanna just throw something in the chat box. You know, of a creative talent, creative asset. Let's just see. Um, if everyone is kind of understanding what I mean by a creative. Strong arts community, aromatherapy. Galleries, yes. Co-working spaces, Makers Mercantile and Sullivan, thank you. Breweries, yes, microbreweries. Pop-up markets, woodworking, small lives. Okay, you guys are getting this. Thank you. Incubators, wonderful. Weekly summer concerts. Okay, we're, we're getting there. Thank you very much. Continue, and I'm going to continue on, but you are definitely on the right track here. Thank you for your comments. So who is the creative? Okay, um, you're going to see in this little picture here, you've got the left brain individual. Uh, that's more that they like straight lines. Um, actually, I am a little bit more left brain than I am right brain. I can be creative. I work with creatives, but I'm more systematic. I have a degree in finance and economics, so that kind of gives you an idea. But those creative types, I actually, I love being around creative types. First, they're open-minded. They're the dreamer. They have an independence of mind. 
They are single-mindedly persistent even when others do not recognize what they are doing. They are doing their own thing. They're not afraid of change. They embrace change, actually. They have a well-developed sense of humor. Uh, they're competitive and ambitious. And that's not just artists. And I love this quote from Hawkins in 2013. He wrote a book on the, uh, the creative economy. We admire creative people because they turn something into something new, and we may fear them for the same reason. So if you're a left brainer and you're comfortable there like I am, or if you're a county official, a city official, uh, someone who is looking for opportunities to work with the creative economy, what part of my presentation here today is to take away some of that fear, uh, to not be so afraid of change and to know that developing a creative economy, I have yet to see where any of the changes have been negative or have hurt a community. I wouldn't be teaching it if I thought it was going to hurt your community. I've only seen positive things coming out of developing a creative economy. What creatives don't like, okay? They do not like rigid hierarchical systems of management or power. That does not work. If you think as say you're on a city council or a county board or you're a city manager or you're in charge of an economic development group and you wanna take those creatives and you want to control them, it will not work. In fact, controlling creativity is pretty much an oxymoron. There is no control over creativity. Creativity is the opposite of control. Creatives do not gravitate towards structure, discipline, or the status quo. So sometimes they will seemingly butt up against what you've been doing, what your traditional, um, perhaps economic development or community development um, processes have been, but um, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but they do not have problems going against the status quo. Don't expect quick successes, but a sense of urgency is okay. You need to keep them moving and do not steal their work. Um, there are IP laws and um, I like to, it's one of the first things I talk to my um, uh, students about, but I have seen where uh, for some reason um, people don't think that creative work or design work or art, uh, that it has any value. And that is sort of a uh, something that I need you to think about and start changing those attitudes about um, because uh, their work is important and it is valued and, and they should be um, offered um, value back for it. Now there's factors impacting a creative development and that is attitudes, conditions, and cultures. And I'm gonna quickly go through these. Uh, one is attitudes. You wanna respect the creatives, especially those you already have. You wanna understand the move from tangible to intangible. You're no longer working with the land, you're working with the people, you're working with their ideas, you're working with their um, um, interactions with each other. Uh, out of the box thinking, not just into a bigger box. I, you know, a lot of communities, especially rural communities, but not just rural communities, they're always looking at what the other community has and trying to copy it. And in, in developing a creative economy, you're looking for your own community's uniqueness, your unique businesses. If you want to attract tourism, if you want to attract millennials, if you want to attract new people into your community, they're coming in for the reason why you're different, because of the reasons you're different, not because of the reasons you're the same. Um, you don't want to be exactly like the other communities, and that's what creative types and creative enterprises can do for your community. They can make, they can take it and make it unique. And work what was what is already happening in a community. A lot of times I see communities, they sit down, they get into a planning group, they decide they want this, they want that, when in reality there's already things going on in the community. You need to assess that. And Nancy was talking about my 
a four part planet community planning um, for developing a creative economy. And that's what you do. You actually look at those resources, then you look at what else you need, and then you go from there. But work with what's already happening. Um, it's not about recreating a wheel, it's about them creating their own wheels and you putting four wheels on the wagon and then moving it forward. Conditions. Um, different conditions can mean uh, more opportunity for creative economy. And in Rockford, which you'll see this photograph of this building, um, unemployment was one of the key factors. Rockford had 23% unemployment. Um, a lot of people were out of work. Um, they were all from all different educational levels, um, but they were out of work, and that's why when the city market was started, many of the people that started businesses there, for instance, um, Joe with Wood Fire Pizza, when he started, he bought just a Wood Fire wagon, a Wood Fire Pizza wagon, and pulled it into the market. Uh, Joe will tell you today, now that he's opened his wonderful restaurant on East State Street in Rockford, uh, again, called Joe's Wood Fired Pizza, um, that all he was really looking for was a job. That's what he said, pay him, that's all I need is a job. He had a family to support, he was out of work. Um, 17,000 people had lost jobs in manufacturing within two years in Rockford, and 40,000 people were living under the poverty level. Some people had been making 60, 70,000 the year before and found themselves getting a thousand to fifteen hundred a month in unemployment benefits. So unemployment was a real key factor when the market started up. But now, because we're at high employment, it is harder to get people to, um, say, leave a job to start a business. But of course, we know in another year or two uh, that could turn around and we could be back into a recession. Then, as your unemployment rates become higher, you may find more people that want to become entrepreneurs. Right now, where I see the entrepreneurial development the most is especially with women and other creative types, not to just say women, and also minorities, because they are still struggling to maybe get the full-time job or even be able to accept it because they have other uh, things at home, like children. Uh, millennials, they are probably the most entrepreneurial generation we have ever had. Um, this, not only are they the ones that will start businesses, they will bring businesses to your community. And I have a lot of rural communities down here I'm working with that really want to bring, you know, these large companies in with all of these jobs, but a lot of them are very low paying. Millennials, however, are actually bringing their own jobs with them. In Centralia, Illinois, a young woman has moved back from St. Louis, uh, and she has brought her job at Cigna with her. She works on her laptop. She goes into the office in St. Louis about once a month, but um, she is actually able to do a job um, uh, off-site. And I would really like to see a lot of larger cities and companies uh, giving these opportunities to millennials so they could move out into rural areas. Uh, infrastructure placemaking, population, yes, uh, obviously in Chicago, it may seem that a creative economy is a little easier to start, uh, but really it's more about bringing those creative types together, giving them an opportunity to interact with each other, and then interact with the economic development, community development, city managers, city councils. Um, you know, take their ideas seriously. Try to work them into their existing plans. And whatever you do, make sure you support them. Culture. This is for some communities, um, and not just rural communities, but those communities that I would define as being more traditional in their power structure, sometimes have a little bit of an issue when it comes to change. And if you have difficulties with change, then you may have some difficulties when you're developing a creative economy. But I really do believe that the benefits outweigh uh, the changes that may need to be made. So first you need to ask yourself, is your community ready to include cre the creative economy? Is your community prepared to allow the creative to create something truly new? Or are traditional structures or values just too unyielding? And are you ready to cultivate the unique in your community. 
Now, I do know if you get a group of creatives together in your community and they get half a chance, they will initiate it themselves. In fact, I've seen a lot of them do crowdfunding. They find creative ways to find money. And it isn't the burden on a city that you would think. And for a lot of these smaller communities that don't have money to invest, um, this is probably one of the best ways you can go about uh, developing this entrepreneurial ecosystem, building business, and also, also building employment, uh, creating jobs. I was talking about uh, Woodfire Pizza in Rockford. Uh, Joe has several employees there. I don't know how many are working for him right now, but he has added a lot of good jobs to Rockford. And uh, I think I was talking to someone at uh, the Illinois Institute of Rural Affairs last week, and he said, you know, Pam, I'd rather have 50 businesses with uh, five jobs each than to have one business with 250 jobs that could walk away from the community and then we have to replace them. So it's something to think about. Steps to developing a creative economy. I'm not gonna go over these four steps. We're gonna go over these individually. Um, and I wanna make sure that I stay within my time frame. But down at the bottom, if the idea sounds weird, crazy, or different, you are probably on the right track. That's what you're looking for. Remember, it's new and it's unique. It's not something someone else has done. It's not something that's been done before. Or if it's been done before, maybe it didn't work. But this creative is ready to try it now. And you know, timing is everything. So it may not have worked in your community five years ago or 10 years ago. But if you've got the right creatives that are behind it, the innovation and the support, today might be the day. OK, I am going to load a video. This, is, uh, this video is called Developing the Creative Economy in Alton, Illinois, with Sarah McGibbony, the executive director of Alton Main Street. After I gave a presentation there, she had this wonderful video put together. And personally, I believe she does a better job of describing what a creative-centric community is than I, I'm able to do. So let me pull this video up. And we will watch her. And please, if you cannot hear it, put it in the chat box. I think I've got everything set up correctly, but we will see. Um, Alton Main Street is a nonprofit group, and our function is basically to keep downtown Alton on the map. Uh, we do that through things such as special events, uh, beautification projects like public art and uh, planting flowers and things like that, and also a lot of economic development opportunities. Uh, we try to um, give people tours of available real estate. We try to come up with opportunities for people to uh, sell their handmade wares and advance their businesses. And we're just always on the lookout for uh, people who are interested in living or working or eating or dining or you know, being entertained in downtown. And we're just kind of trying to have uh, sorts of all sorts of economic and social activity happening in downtown Alton. The Creative Entrepreneur Workshop is basically to provide all of our creatives in town with resources to build their business. And we're really trying to encourage people to think outside the box on what a creative business is. Of course, artists fall under that umbrella, but also things like uh, fashion or culinary or tech companies and things like that. Um, all just sorts of outside the box type of professions that people are able to use their uh, creativity and uh, build their own business or uh, join a cooperative or a company that appreciates those sort of uh, employees. The ultimate goal of Alton Main Street is to help Alton reimagine itself, uh, kind of help the community uh, be reborn from an industrial type of economy to this new economy that is more centered around entrepreneurs and tourism and uh, all of that also just really raises the quality of life for the people who live here. So um, it's really just becoming an all-inclusive town where there's always something going on for everyone and it's uh, you know walkable and bikeable and uh, everybody has locally owned and independently operated businesses to choose from um, instead of franchises. That's really the number one key for Alton Main Street and what we're going for. Uh, what we're really trying to do is help people graduate to the next level of their business. So tonight we'll be trying to introduce a jewelry artist, for example, to a number of retail shops and galleries where they could potentially uh, consign their work. Or we are trying to get uh, all of the local bands that we have a wonderful wealth of musical talent here in town. Uh, we created an information sheet that just has contact information for all the booking agents for all the, the bars downtown. So we're really just trying to get people 
to be employed in their creative enterprise. Well, we really hope to continue this conversation and have other similar events that are uh, economic development in scope. Uh, but really what we would love to happen next is for a number of people who attend this workshop here to be able to uh, just take their business to the next level and just take the next step up, whether it's, you know, finally getting up the, uh, you know, the courage to actually have a booth at the farmer's market this year and sell some of the things that they've been making and just as a hobby or giving them away as gifts, you know, trying to turn it into a business or to take someone who, you know, has been under that pop-up tent for the last couple of seasons and graduate them uh, into a, a perhaps a brick and mortar store. We have a couple of great success stories like that. Uh, Luciana's Pastries, for example, on State Street started out as a vendor at the farmer's market. So we have lots of uh, mentors and champions that we can point to to say this really works and uh, here's how we can show you the door to advance your business. Okay, well, as you can see, uh, Sarah is uh, contagious. Uh, her energy, her passion, and she did a fabulous job talking about how a community can work on developing a creative economy. And uh, that was actually done in April 2016. I just recently was working with Sarah to finish a case study on uh, Alton. And um, I'm going to share bits and pieces of that today. Uh, but uh, really, if you are in the area and have time to stop by in Alton, you might want to take a look at what they're doing. Um, uh, it's just one of the examples. Like I mentioned, Ottawa. Uh, we've talked about Rockford and now Alton. Um, those are communities that are working at it. Uh, it does take a little while to get started up. Uh, it takes support and, and promoting. but uh, she certainly uh, understands what it means to become creative centric. Next, number two, prepare to break the rules. Um, I'm not encouraging people to go out and break the law, by the way. I always like to say that before I start this portion, but sometimes ordinances, um, you know, some cities have ordinances that date back to the 1800s. So sometimes things are gonna need to be changed. For instance, in Rockford, um, Kathy McDermott, who's the manager of the city market, fortunately for the, the small group of people that ha helped start the Rockford city market in 2010, uh, she had some really strong connections with the city. Uh, as well as Peter Provenzana, who was uh, uh, leading the group at the time. Uh, one of the things was is that back in the 70s, Rockford had ordinances that said you can't put anything on the sidewalks. They were tired of what few businesses were left there in the 70s coming out and doing these, uh, they were sidewalk sales, but they were tur turning into pretty much got pretty junky and things were, you know, garbage on the uh, on the ground. And so they put in an ordinance where you couldn't have anything on the sidewalks. Well, that means you couldn't have a city market on the sidewalk. That means if you owned a restaurant in downtown Rockford, you could not put tables and chairs out front in front of your stores. So what they did is they created festival zones. Um, and those festival zones made it possible uh, to go out and do some of these things. Uh, buskers were allowed to go out and um, play music on the streets. And so those ordinances needed to be changed. And in fact, Rockford uh, has those ordinances available. Uh, Mount Vernon, Illinois, where I my office currently is at, adopted those festival zone ordinances um, uh, about two years ago. Uh, they used those as a template. The mayor did make one change. Uh, she only allows beer and wine in those festival zones, uh, whereas in Rockford, uh, you can also serve hard liquor. Um, another one is the Sipyard in Urbana. That's the photograph you're looking at right now. If anybody's been in Urbana, uh, you may have seen this. Um, what they had proposed is to take this uh, vacant lot between two buildings. Um, they turned it into a coffee shop. They also have beer uh, and wine. But what they really was unique is uh, they wanted to be able to give people spray cans of paint and let them put this graffiti uh, art on the wall. Um, there was some pushback on this, as you can imagine, but ultimately they approved it and um, it has turned out to be a really unique gathering place in uh, downtown Urbana. Um, I was just reading an article a couple days ago that talked about uh, one uh, city, uh, they were trying to bring in a microbrewery and that is considered manufacturing. 
And another one was a soap where they actually made soap in the store. Again, it was considered light manufacturing and they weren't allowed to bring it into downtown because it wasn't zoned for manufacturing. So there were uh, people that said they couldn't come in. So what they did is they created a special ordinance called light manufacturing use as accessory to retail. So it was just, just the way where the city can start having an open door policy making. Um, that, that's really all you need from the city. It's less about the funding, uh, more about um, making sure that uh, these creatives are not stifled in any way and also making sure that you're doing everything you can to promote and support them. Number three, Step three of developing a creative economy is identifying existing markets and creating new ones. If I had a little bit more time, I would ask for some more information in the chat box. But I, like I said, we're, um, we, I want to stay to the, the one hour time limit that we have. Um, what I want to emphasize, although I'm telling you some of these communities that I have been working with, they don't just go with the small projects. They're going for the big ones, and I admire them for that. But that isn't absolutely necessary. Informal, grassroots, street level, pop-up micro activities, each of which may be short-lived, but which adds up to a continuous stream of events and experiences in a marketplace of endless information which sharpens the producers and makers skills and buyers appetites. It's saying, okay, they can be small. Uh, you can fail. It's okay. You're not going to put that much money into it. That's the beauty of these types of, of, of events. Outdoor markets, Pop-up shops, I absolutely love pop-up shops. I teach a lot, in fact, I have another program on pop-up shops if anyone is interested. In-store events, those are so wonderful. Um, in Rockford, uh, there was a shop called Pasta Cucina, and they did just one uh, in-store event where they did cooking demonstrations and they had homemade pasta. Um, unfortunately, they didn't stay in business very long, but that was only because it's owned by Woodfire Pizza and Joe decided to bring his homemade pasta, pasta into his new restaurant when he opened that on East State Street. The co-biz, two businesses coming together. Perfect example is in Rockford downtown where two retailers, high fashion women's retail, came in together so that they it was easier for them to afford the building and the lease. Uh, but eventually they split and now there are two shops. Um, personally, if you would ask someone in Rockford, Illinois in 2008 or 2009, will there ever be any uh, women's retail in downtown Rockford again? They would have said no, absolutely no. At that time, maybe one out of every seven or eight buildings had a business in it and most of them were struggling. Uh, after the market started and some of these businesses started to expand out of the market, there are literally blocks in downtown Rockford that you can't even lease property. But COBIS is an opportunity to try to save money and start a little smaller. Art galleries, Etsy shops, art co-ops, online sales opportunities, vendors at music festivals, using empty storefronts. Uh, we had an example in Centralia uh, just a few, about a month ago that, uh, uh, excuse me, it was over the holidays, I apologize, it was over the holidays where a winery uh, came, Crooked, Crooked Creek Winery came in and they actually set up in an empty storefront uh, in downtown Centralia, a town of about 12,000 people. And uh, it was fantastic, I think, for them and definitely for the people at, at, that were attending the uh, Small Business Saturday event. And then finally, or create something new, uh, create something different, microbreweries, um, you know, soap making. Uh, one of the things you have to remember in retail today is that it has to be a shopping experience. If not, they'll just buy it online. Okay, finally, uh, step number four, the last step, I tried to make this easy if you want to develop a creative economy, uh, but nothing's easy. It's always a lot, a lot of hard work. Promote, support, energize. Any community that wants a creative ecosystem, you're going to have to support those creatives. And when I mean support and promote, I'm talking about if you want it, then shop there. 
if you want them to stay, shop there. If you want it, post it on Facebook. Share their um, events on Facebook. Uh, even if you don't intend to attend, uh, get the word out there. Uh, tourism councils, city councils, and others, uh, city managers, economic development directors, uh, make sure you're helping to promote and support these small businesses. They have so much going on. There's so many things they're trying to do, uh, but they can't do it on a, their own. It takes a community to build an entrepreneurial ecosystem. Um, develop a marketing action plan. Um, uh, Facebook collaborations, that's what I meant about sharing the different events. It only, I've timed it, it only takes seven seconds to share a Facebook post. So help out your small businesses. Help out your businesses and get those things out there on Facebook, on Twitter, um, what are the others, Instagram. Um, help them out uh, any way you can. And then also fund some of their projects. If you have funding available, um, make sure that you um, make sure that uh, you put some money into this. I know we've focused so much money into attracting businesses, large businesses from out of town, um, but if you want this kind of a lifestyle, you want these small businesses starting, and even more so, these small women and um, uh, minority businesses, then you need to put a few funds into it. And I know that that's one of the things I hear them struggle. They're like last on the list to get any funding. And personally, I think if you're looking to attract more millennials, or to brighten up your downtown. Um, these work particularly well in downtown. Uh, you're gonna have to put a little funding into it. And last on this page, I'm gonna talk about pollinator businesses. There is an author named Michael Schumann who just wrote a book called The Local Economy Solution. And you'll see these two ladies, uh, Rayann uh, and Jessica, to the right here in this photograph. These two women are little dynamos. First of all, Ray Ann owns Rail Cafe in downtown Centralia, and Jessica owns uh, um, uh, Image for You, or Image, I, now I've forgotten the name of her business and I apologize. But uh, Jessica and Ray Ann are putting up pop up shops in Rail Cafe. They have five of them, or six of them, five or six pop up shops every month. They plan on doing this every month uh, in downtown Centralia. So if you're anywhere near Centralia, look them up. Uh, the shop is, uh, the pop-up shop event is called Coffee and Things. These two are pollinators, and especially Jessica. Jessica will market everything. She's in the business and professional women's organization. She gets out there, she markets, she shares every event that's going on. She works with the Chamber of Commerce. Um, and she is just a little dynamo, and she's what's called a pollinator business. It means she's out there and she's working. She's promoting, supporting, and energizing. So if you're not going to start a creative business, make sure you're a pollinator. Make sure you help get the word out. And I see some great things coming into the chat box, and hopefully I'll be able to address these. We've already talked about Rockford. I'm just going to mention that that uh, city market, they started in 2010. They had a 430% increase in attendance at the market in just six years. And they generated a record $5.3 in spending on market nights throughout its season in 2018. Um, they also had a 113% plus increase in retail storefronts in downtown area. Crime decreased by 50% in the downtown area between 2015 and 2016, and residential housing in downtown increased by 173% since the city market opened. Oh, thank you, Jessica. Jessica just reminded me that her business is called, I'm glad you're on the call there, Inspire for You Creative Marketing. She's put it into the uh, box. Uh, if you're looking for someone that can do creative marketing, um, Jessica has done a fantastic job for uh, downtown Centralia. Um, and by the way, you notice I have no, um, I'm not abashed to promote some of the small creative businesses and business people I've worked with. Um, they're doing a great job. Okay, um, uh, we'll get to the questions in a minute. Uh, let's see. 
Alton, Illinois, uh, you just saw what she was doing in Alton. They have their farmers and artisan market. They had a boot camp for startups and social entrepreneurs. Uh, but they've indicated that they are still struggling with rules of the city government, a lot of red tape. Uh, I've heard some of the struggles that they've had um, when new ideas are coming up. It is taking a long, long time. And they feel that some of their elected officials are resistant to change. That's not unusual, though. So if you're listening from Alton, um, it'd be great if, if maybe we could get together and have a pep talk on how we can be a little bit more open. But I'm finding that in a lot of other communities. Um, I think Ottawa is probably one of the exceptions to that, and that might be why millennials are increasing there, is because they had a mayor come on. Um, oh my gosh, how long has Bob Eschbach been mayor? 20, 25 years now? At least 20. Um, and he did a lot with beautification, uh, entrepreneurial development, developing an entrepreneurial ecosystem, working with local artists. Susan Burton, who is an artist, uh, she has done an outstanding job working with public art and also something I don't see a lot of, community art. She just doesn't do the art and um, put it out for the public. She actually allows the uh, public to come in and help her create the art. Uh, seriously, she is a mosaic artist and um, she has had children come in actually and helped her glue the pieces on. And I've seen photographs of where the um, moms are actually kind of pushing the kids out of the way so that they can help uh, with those community art projects. Again, just something really creative, something really different. Um, Finally, Greenville, Illinois. Greenville, Illinois is only about 6,800 in population, uh, but they are were really interested in bringing a creative economy into their community. Um, they had uh, Art and Experience Gallery chose Greenville to open, but unfortunately, um, the gallery did not make it. And I think most of that has to do with uh, the not enough promotion and, and uh, out side of the city, you know, relying on just who's in your city to be able to build up a business. But now another art gallery has opened in the fall of 2018. So they still have one. Uh, they have just hired a full-time tourism director, which is exciting. They had had a part-time director that uh, left maybe six months ago. So I am really excited that this full-time tourism director is going to be able to help uh, develop this creative economy, build the creative ecosystem. In fact, I understand uh, he actually started Anna Brothers Coffee Shop in Greenville uh, many years ago and also um, was on the city council. So that, that sort of relationship should really help them. Um, so uh, they still need to do a little more research on how to advertise for increased tourism. But uh, one of their big successes last year was on 4th of July, uh, after all that we did community planning, uh, we did it um, for, let's see, four sessions over a year. And one of the things that they decided on their um, uh, strategies was to do more music festivals. Uh, this community of 6,800 people raised $40,000 in 30 days in about May of 2018 and had uh, the fourth, they call it the fourth uh, celebration. And on the 4th of July, they had a music festival right downtown. They just closed the streets, set up a stage. I mean, it was just boom. It was together within about 60 days. Uh, and they had uh, over three thousand attendees. So this shows that when even rural communities, even small communities, when you allow the, the creatives and, and I'm not there's no age age here. Um, they can be over 70, they can be under seven, uh, just as long as you're appreciating those creatives. But they did a wonderful job with that. Remember changing a creative culture takes time. Uh, and here we see the market started in 2010, just a few people, but we had about 20, I think, uh, vendors uh, to a new pavilion in 2017 and 60,000 visitors uh, each year. And now, just recently, if you've seen Rockford News, this is Kathy McDermott in the lower picture. Uh, she's the city market manager and has been 
uh, since its inception in 2010, they are opening a brand new indoor market right next to the pavilion for the outdoor market. And that should be open in a few months. I think they've already leased the space out. Um, uh, finally, what are the next steps? I'm recommending community planning for creative-based economy. It's a program I developed. It is not necessarily me that has to give it. If you have a community development person, a city manager, a economic development person, or anyone who has ever facilitated community planning, have them come in. Uh, it's, it's a very basic community planning model uh, based on your resources and gaps in your resources, but it is focused on those four steps for creating a, uh, or developing a creative economy that I talked about earlier in this presentation. I also encourage business education, especially made for the creative types. I uh, encourage you to create promotion committees that do nothing but help uh, to promote these creative businesses and develop uh, and promote this ecosystem, this creative ecosystem you're trying to put together. And I also encourage you to get together and celebrate your successes. Uh, I think this is really important. I haven't seen a lot of that being done in small communities, but once you've done something well, I think you need to celebrate it before you move on. And I also encourage you, don't criticize right away. I mean, once it's done and you've done a good job, don't start looking at what you did wrong. Look at what you did right and celebrate it. Because, I mean, life's short. When you accomplish something, let's, 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 Let's get together and appreciate it. I think your creatives would appreciate it. It also helps the community understand the benefit. And um, during the Greenville, um, Greenville planning process, their city manager, uh, Dave Wiley, uh, at one point he said, you know, I get this. This is about having fun. And I love that. He's right. I think when I look at rural communities and some of the issues even in urban cities that we're facing right now, they talk about the opiate addictions and the suicides. They talk about helplessness, hopelessness, worthlessness. Well, the thing is, is the first thing you can do is have fun, bring people together, let them appreciate and, and enjoy their community. And for these pop-up shops and retail events, that's bringing shopping to communities that no longer have that kind of retail shopping. Sure, it may only happen once a month, or once every other month, but it's an opportunity they're not gonna have. I mean, some rural communities aren't even that close. They're 20 miles away from a Walmart, but if you can bring in a few pop-up shops, bakers, uh, fashion, um, uh, in fact, I think in downtown Centralia, they brought one fashion retailer in from Columbia, Missouri, and they were there for the day, and they had a really great time. So um, I really want you to think about celebrating those successes, but you can see it's a community event. This is, this is about your community. Okay, and my last slide here, I always put this slide up and then I'm gonna finish the presentation. And if you'd like to stay on as I answer some of these questions, please feel free. But I also know some of you need to get back um, uh, to what you were doing. Um, I wanna talk about just one minute, conscious inclusion and outsider art. Um, this is actually my quote in a paper I wrote. Artistic talents know no socioeconomic boundaries. Regardless of educational attainment, income levels, mental or physical disability, race, ethnicity, or gender, they can only be underutilized or ignored, okay? Creativity, that talent, um, it doesn't matter if you're white, if you're African American, if you're Hispanic, if you're Asian, if you're young, if you're old. It doesn't matter if you're in a wheelchair. And I know that some of you know that a lot of people who are very, very creative suffer from mental illnesses like bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. Some of our most famous artists and creatives suffered from those mental illnesses. What I'm saying is when you sit down and you start having these meetings, I want them to be inclusive. And by the way, creatives love inclusivity. They just want to work with other creatives. Uh, and another good example is all the women you see in this photograph were my students. 
Some of them actually took the class at the Rockford Housing Authority, um, their, uh, one of their housing projects, a housing project that had 265 shot fired days a year. None of these young women are living in the housing development anymore. Their creative talents and accessing opportunities within the city of Rockford, in the city of market, other festivals have helped them come out of a situation where it was a place I would never want to have to live. Um, up in the upper right hand corner, Juanita, the month before we took her to the city market for one day, she made $600 that month for the whole month as a, as a um, caretaker at a nursing home. In one day, she sold over $600 of her jewelry. That doubled her income for her and her three sons for that month. Um, that is how important it is to reach out and make sure you pull all these different ethnicities and genders and races and people with physical dis disabilities. Uh, if they're creative, you want them to be included. Um, that's going to end it. I am going to go back here. Nancy, have you been watching the chat box? Uh, we've got about uh, two minutes for questions, but if people want to stay, um, I'd be happy to answer a few more questions. Yeah, Pam, there are a few questions in the chat box. I'll start with the first one that came um, up. Uh, as a city council member, I would recommend having some open conversations with your city council and city administrators while government entities do not need to be Oh, do not need to be open to change and considering if regulations are or are not important. Open conversations will help both sides to evaluate and understand regulations. Okay, that's not a question. Thank that's you. a comment. Oh, but, a comment. No, but and I appreciate the anything? comment. Okay, yeah. and now I can see them all too. I just opened the chat mm -hmm. box and made it wider. Uh, will we be able to receive these presentation slides? Yes, uh, I will be sending them to Nancy in PDF form and she will get them out to you. Uh, let's see, great presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, grew up in Rockford. I uh, need to get back there and see what's going on. Um, coming out of the housing project. Well, we have something here from Melissa Cooper. Um, I, okay. I know Melissa. She's a, she's a Stevenson Fellow alumni. Okay. What is your experience with measuring economic impact of local creative economies? We've been working on this at McLean County using a program called CV Suite we are finding that the creative economy is defined so differently across entities. I'm curious as if you have any advice, best practices, or examples of countywide impact analyses, which include both rural and urban areas. Actually, I do not have any recommendations right now, and I have found very little on it, especially in the state of Illinois. There has been some work internationally in Brazil and in England. Uh, Hauken, who wrote The Creative Economy, has done some work in that, but I don't know of any here. And unfortunately, there was some pretty good information about tourism, but that stopped when we didn't get a budget. I am actually working on that. I do know right now, I think um, uh, there are some models out there that we could try using. Uh, right now, I think in Alton, they indicated, um, I'm trying to think, I think they had five businesses did I have that in my, um, hold on, she is just doing it based on the number of businesses. Um, I don't have that slide up. Yes, I do. 20 new businesses opened in 2018 in downtown, five opened in 2017. The other way we'd look at, you know, the sales tax increases. Um, I think in Rockford, uh, when we talked about, uh, I do know that like the very first year that they did the Rockford City Market, they found that um, sales in the downtown restaurants doubled. We actually went restaurant to restaurant on the market night, on Friday night, that those sales actually doubled. Uh, sorry, I don't have that yet. If I find anything, I will make sure I get it out to everyone on my blog, or our blog, I should say, the CED blog called Building Entrepreneurial Communities. Um, but right now, I, I can't answer that question exactly. 
Um, and then I'll ask a few more questions, even though we've passed the, the one o'clock hour. Um, but while I'm doing that, I'm going to throw up a poll question about um, whether this program increased your knowledge on how community leaders can support creative business endeavors of residents, including those living in low resource households. Yeah. And you can click right on your screen um, to let us know uh, to the extent to which you felt you um, gained knowledge on this topic. Yes. I would really appreciate you filling out that poll for us too. It's very, very helpful for us. So just take a second, click the box, and uh, uh, if you have any questions, just let Lance, Nancy know in the chat box. And Susan asks if we can share the blog address, and I can, I'll put that in the chat box as well as include it in the um, follow-up email that I'll send out to everybody with the slides. That'd be great. You will find some other really interesting things from, I'm just one of, uh, I think there's four authors now out there. You'll find some really interesting um, posts on that blog. Uh, but I do post most everything. Um, I think my most recent post was on pop-up shops and their impact on rural communities. Um, so uh, yeah, please uh, make sure you get that posted. Uh, it's on economic impact assessment most recently for Quincy University. That's a, that's a good point. I could call the Institute. Uh, is that w I Western Illinois University? Yes, I was just at their conference last week. But um, I will try to see if I can find. Right now, we look more at uh, the number of businesses, uh, the number of businesses in a market, the sales. Uh, it's it's a pretty individual and not a very an exact not a very exact process yet. Uh, Nancy just shared building entrepreneurial communities blog. I also want to let you know for anyone that's left on the call that I will be going to the north here in the next couple of months, northern Illinois that is, um, and I am planning to give these presentations in LaSalle, Rochelle, uh, and possibly a, a couple other communities uh, in northern Illinois. And so kind of stay tuned and we'll make sure that uh, you know about when those are going to be scheduled. Nancy, that looks like we answered the questions. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you for filling out the poll. Um, my, uh, let me get my email address here. If you have any questions directly from me, uh, please feel free to copy this email address. And thank you again for uh, attending this webinar. Thank you.